how to extend Perlin noise in Clip Studio Paint. Create something like that. The key panel here is the layer panel. You can find that via the window menu. Just create layers, multiple layers. And you can create five, 10, 15 layers, up to you. So layer menu and new raster layer. So you've got another layer. Now you can fill it. You can fill it with purling noise. So filter menu. So go down to draw and that's all it is. Purling noise. That's the only one in there. Now you've got a number of options. Quite, quite a lot of features. You can change the slider. You can increase the scale so you can see it just gets really big. And you can push it all the way back down to get very fine grain. Now you can also use amplitude, which makes it more the contrast. So you sort of end up with that sort of very, virtually nothing there at all, or that black and white design there. Again, you can change the scale at any point as well. Attenuation, you can change that and you end up, you can see there with that sort of, again, just very intense whites and blacks. And you can change repeat. Now the repeat doesn't seem to have much effect when you set the attenuation very low. So you set it the other way, the attenuation, and then use repeat. You can see the result of the repeat. You can see it just creates a... It's much more intense effect there. You put it there. And you can vary it numerous ways. Just experiment with those settings. So you can just go backwards and forwards. And you can also use the offset X and offset Y. Personally, I don't use those too often. But you can just move it backwards and forwards till you get one that you, you like. Once you're happy with that, click OK. And it, that filter is really one for experimenting with. So you've got a layer. Well, what you can do, you can go and create another layer. Or you can blur the effect. You can do a, do a whole range of things. You don't have to go to another layer. You can just modify the one you just created, that Perlin noise, and just maybe use a motion blur or a blur, any of those standard filters. So you get like nice streaks across the screen. And you can run the blur a couple of times if you wish. Because obviously the setting just goes to a certain size. Just run it again three or four times. Well, now go for a new layer. So layer menu and new raster layer. So you've got two layers now. Obviously an empty one below. So again, filter menu and draw and pearl in noise. And just vary the settings. Don't go with the ones you had before. Just change them. Just maybe go for low contrast or increased contrast, amplitude. And you just keep varying it. Just moving the offset, moving the offset wide. Just create small, large, just a variety of different purling noises. Click OK. And now you've got two layers. And again, you can go to filters. You maybe go and apply a number of other filters. There's a whole range of maybe not as many as some applications, but there are a selection of very useful filters. But what you can also do, you can always go and create another layer. Or maybe use selections as well to combine this. I say this time, Gaussian Blur, up to you. But you can also create another layer. So you've got now three layers. Again, go to Filter and Draw and Pearl in Noise. And just vary the settings again. Just run through them, just run through a whole range of them. Sadly, there's no preset feature. Be really nice if there was a preset feature where you could store the presets, but you can just run through a few of these settings. And once you're happy with that, click OK. 
And of course, you could add additional effects to it again as well. Maybe motion blur or Gaussian blur. You don't have to keep it as is. So once you've done that, you've got layers. And the key thing with layers is you can blend them. You go to there and you see with that layer selected, you can change the normal to maybe darken, multiply. The key, like I say, is window and layer. So long as you've got that. Darken, multiply, and you can see just by using blending, you can create different noise effects. Subtract, maybe not as good. Really depends what you want. Overlay, and of course you, you can create five, 10, 15 layers and combine them in multiple different ways. Of course you can also add transformations into the mix as well. So you could transform the layer and then use blending modes as well. So go to the next layer. Obviously the bottom layer, you won't want to change the blending mode. But all the other layers above, change the blending modes and blend them in different ways. And what you can also do is you can go to layer menu and new raster layer. Set a color green, blue, red, whatever. And then you can go to the edit menu and apply a fill to it. So edit and fill. And again, you could use blending modes as well with that because it's a layer. You could also change your opacity. Now I could change your opacity also for the other ones as well. You can change that to say 50%. So you can see you've added some color to the design. Instead of just standard gray, you've now got the option for color. And this could be a background, a texture, whatever. And you've got there using different blending modes. You can run through the blending modes and you can see different designs that can be created just by doing that sort of green lava effect. You can create some very extreme designs as well as just basic purling noise effects. So once you're happy with that, once you've gone through and tested the ones you like, what you can do, you can always go to layer menu and flatten the entire thing, flatten the image. Of course, what you can do then if you want to save it, obviously you could save it. Just export it, save it. You can also apply additional effects to that design. You could transform it, modify it. But you can also register it as material so you can use it in future projects. You can do that via the Edit menu and Register Material and Image. So the current image can be turned into a material. So you can give it a name. Obviously, layer one is not very descriptive, but you give it like Perlin noise one or two, three, four. You can also set it for use as a brush tip, if you wish, or paper texture. You can set the different things. Tiling is no use because it's just not going to look very good. It's going to have lines for it. But if you want that, fine. You've got a variety of different tiling options there, but I'm not going to go for tiling. And you can also specify overlay, etc. if you wish. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for a place to store it. And you can do that via the location setting. Expand that out, go to color pattern, maybe background. There's a, a variety of areas you could store it. It doesn't really matter where you store it, as long as that's where you want to store it. Something like background and artificial. 
And what you can do, you can also give it a tag so it makes it easy to find. Perlin noise or Perlin. You can put like green or wherever you wish. Once you're happy with that, click OK. And then you can access it via the window menu and materials. Go down to the category you've added it to, and then you can use it from there. I hope you found this tutorial about Clip Studio Paint of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel, always adding new tutorials about Clip Studio Paint, Critter, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Illustrator, and many, many others. Please add some comments, always appreciated. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.